Now, just because the Jimny is hugely popular and might be just one of the coolest cars you can buy, that doesn't necessarily mean they're any good. And now that buying a used example is about the only way you're gonna get one, unless you put your order for a new one in months and months and months ago, what actually goes wrong with them? And should you seriously consider buying one? Let's find out. Now the fourth generation Jimny has been with us since late 2018. And unless you've been living under a rock, it is basically Suzuki's pint-sized, affordable little off-roader. But there's a bit more to it than that. Unlike the majority of small SUVs out there, and like some of the most capable hardcore off-roaders, the Jimny is built on a body-on-frame chassis, it has a rigid axle, low-range gearing, minimal overhangs, and Suzuki's all-grip pro traction control system. This means it is perfect for like off-roading shenanigans, but it might kind of suffer in the real world, but we'll get to that in a second. Engine-wise, all Jimnys here in Australia, and the vast majority of Jimnys internationally, feature a 1.5-litre naturally aspirated four-cylinder petrol engine bolted to either a five-speed manual or four-speed automatic. And in terms of different trim specs, here in Australia, we have just two to choose from. Simply the Jimny, or from 2021, the Back to Basics Jimny Lite. But if you're looking in the classifieds and notice models called the Jimny GLX and GL Lite, and you're wondering, what the hell are they? They're from Queensland. It's not, it's not made in Queensland, it's still made in Japan, but it's just through a different distributor, hence why it has a different name. Same car, just different name. Queenslanders always have to be bloody different, don't you? It's okay. We still love you, you rascals. Now, obviously there's plenty more details that we could cover on the Jimny, but if we did, we'd be here forever. So instead, jump on redriven.com and check out the full Jimny cheat sheet. Basically, it's like the ultimate used Jimny buyer's guide. Now, a couple of things worth mentioning here, on top of the two different trim specs, you could almost say that almost no two Jimnys are ever the same because just like this owner has done, plenty of Jimnys are covered in aftermarket accessories. And that's totally fine as long as, like this one, they're quality aftermarket accessories and they've been fitted professionally. Also, can we just talk about the looks for a second? Personally, I love, I love the way these things look. I'll go as far as saying, this is one of the coolest cars money can buy. There's just something about like nuggety little goodness like this. Like there's no pretense, there's no showing off. It's just a, it's like a little box on wheels that just wants to take you adventuring. It doesn't get much cooler than that. But there are some issues, but we'll get to them in a sec. Okay, design-wise in here, it's pretty much the same as the outside. It's tough, it's purposeful, and for me, it's pretty close to perfect for what this is supposed to be. Like, for example, I love the instrument cluster. It just looks so old school. It can be a bit of a challenge to read in certain light, but I love the grab handles. Like, okay, look, all the surfaces you touch, they're all kind of hard, scratchy plastics. That's to be expected. This thing is all about tough wear and tear. This particular car gets a hell of a workout. It is this owner's everyday driver. Every, pretty much every weekend it's going off-road doing some kind of crazy adventure, but it's wearing pretty well. Actually, you know what? When we were researching this video, we obviously read reviews from other journalists and whatnot, and some of the journalists were complaining that this all feels a bit too, you know, the plastics are a bit hard and whatnot. Honestly, complaining about that sort of stuff in the interior of a Jimny, it's like, it's like complaining that the sole of a hiking boot has too much rubber on it. You dickheads, like what are you expecting? Alcantara and a Jimny? Of course it feels like this. This is what it's supposed to feel like, dickheads. Also, sorry to harp on about this, but you gotta remember this was a vehicle that was designed to be under $30,000 when brand spanking new. Again, are you expecting like a leather lined interior? Idiots. Like I even love just the way all the buttons feel, like everything feels exactly as it should. Now, as far as the seats go, look, some people have complained about the seating comfort in these. I'm exactly five centimeters taller than brilliant English comedian Jimny Carr, and I find this totally comfortable. I'm not sure what people are on about. Like, again, it's not a luxury car, but for what it is, comfort's fine. Although one thing that does annoy me, and look, I know I sound like a broken record on this, but the lack of buttons in the infotainment system. Yes, there are buttons on the steering wheel. They're great, but just, Sliders and buttons, when you're bobbling around all over the bush and even like just driving around town, trying to like aim at the screen, just annoying. Give me some buttons. Now in terms of practicality, this particular Jimny is like a full catalog of practicality aftermarket parts because standard, this doesn't exist. Standard, you've got two cup holders here and another little storage bin here. But how cool is this thing? It just goes in here, so you've got an armrest. Also, it comes with USBs. Obviously this owner hasn't wired them in yet, but they're there if you want to. Then under the handbrake, you've got 
this little Velcro thing, cup holder, more storage area there. Standard, you obviously have a spot for your phone down here with a couple of charging ports. Pretty small little glove box there. The door bins are really only for things that have two dimensions. And then around the center console, he's also put these little, let's call them little saddle bags. Oh, and there's sunglasses. What does he wear? He wears Ray-Bans. Well done. Um, and I think that's it up to front for practicality. Yeah, good. Now in the back seat of the Jimny, as you can see, this owner has removed the back seats and replaced it with storage. Probably for the best because I have sat in the back of these when standard and it's almost like sitting in the back of the least roomy third row seat in a small seven seat SUV. It's not really ideal for humans. This is a far better option. But there's an issue with practicality and it's this. See, many Jimny owners love to go off road. That's fantastic. But the roof is only rated to 30 kilos. If you do overload it and you have an accident, it could affect your insurance, so just be careful. Now, practicality in the boot. Look, in a standard Jimny with the seats up, there's not a whole lot of storage space, honestly, but forget the whole rear seat idea, and you can do what this owner's done and pack it out with a whole bunch of stuff. This is pretty bloody good. Not very comfortable for me, but it's good. Plus, if we had the keys, these can open up so you can access from the sides. Also, how good's this? You can change a baby on that. Now, considering how no-nonsense the Jimny is, it actually comes with a pretty decent range of tech and features. Infotainment is taken care of via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto via a screen that is a little on the smaller side and does feel a generation old to use. And if you do like your tunes, make sure you upgrade the speakers because they're pretty average. Oh, also it has Bluetooth connectivity as well. You'll also get a reversing camera, climate control, a trip computer, alloy wheels, LED headlights, fog lights, Guys, the full list is on the cheat sheet. Now, the light variant, it loses the touch screen, so no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. The aircon is just that, air conditioning, no climate control. The alloys are gone as well, replaced by steel wheels, and the halogens replace the LED headlights. Also, to take the pressure off this semiconductor issue that the world is facing at the moment, Suzuki Australia are fitting more recent chimneys with a larger touch screen. But there are some issues with that, which we'll cover soon. Now, as far as safety goes, as you're probably aware, it's not good news here. When ANCAP tested these things when they came out, they awarded them only a three-star rating, stating that the Jimny misses the mark with structural and design weaknesses, poor protection of the pedestrians and cyclists, and a lack of effective safety aids. But to take you through exactly what safety equipment that you can expect, because the safety uh, rating on these is a little bit terrifying, we're gonna do the voiceover for the safety, like I'm telling a ghost story around a campfire. It all started so well, you know. It looks good. It'll go off-road with the best of them. It even has six airbags, ABS, brake assist, low-speed crash and pedestrian avoidance control, ESC, hill descent assist with hill holder, lane departure warnings, and driver attention and fatigue detection. But then, bam! Logic and responsibilities, they hit you in the brain, and all of a sudden you're questioning if you should buy a Jimny at all. Again, guys, for all of the specific details on the safety, the tech, and the features, redriven.com, check out the cheat sheet. Everything you need to know is there. Okay, now the part of the video that I've been looking forward to the most, what's it like to drive? Now, obviously, these things are amazing off-road and even more capable with some quality modifications, but there's, there's already thousands of videos on YouTube of these things dominating the wilderness. So instead, let's break this down into real-world scenarios. Is overtaking even possible? Sort of. As long as the car that you're overtaking is going in reverse or has come to a complete stop. This particular Jimny is an auto, and yet yeah, it's lacking for power. But look, around town, it's fine. It does the job. It keeps up with traffic. You do have to like rev it out to merge into traffic, but that's, that's kind of part of the fun. Is it so small it's scary? Yeah, it does feel small, but it, it kind of feels tough at the same time. But because it is so small and it's basically a box on wheels, like getting it into like a tight car park or maneuvering is an absolute breeze. And it's actually kind of really satisfying when you nail it. But in saying that, out on the freeway, if it gets a bit windy, yeah, it can be scary. Let's just say that I was driving one of these once and there was a massive gust of wind and I ended up changing lanes. I had no intention of changing lanes. Mother Nature decided that's what I needed to do and I ended up in the left lane. Does the off-road suspension and body-on-frame chassis result in a terrible on-road driving experience? Well, like, terrible's kind of subjective, isn't it? And look, it, even with this tough dog suspension, which has improved the ride quality immensely, it does still kind of bobble about a bit and kind of pitch and roll through the corners, but 
again, that's kind of what the Jimny is all about. It feels alive. It feels like it's got its own little character and personality. But will you eventually become tired and exhausted of the bobbling and bouncing nature? Well, only if you're dead inside. It's a small budget built box on wheels. Does it rattle? Well, you know what? No, it doesn't really rattle at all. Like there are rattles in here, but it's all the aftermarket equipment. The actual Jimny part of it, it still sounds really solid. Also, this car has an aftermarket exhaust and intake system, and it can get a little bit droney on a long drive and in the wrong gear, it just kind of sounds okay, but that can get tiring. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes, there is. There are very few other cars out there that draw this amount of positive attention. Everywhere you go, people smile, people give you the thumbs up. It just exudes such love and positivity. Look, overall, don't think of the Jimny as like a normal car. It, it kind of becomes like a best friend. And like all best friends, they're rarely perfect, but you want to hang out with them anyway. And that's, that's the Jimny. Like even when you go for a drive by yourself, you're not actually going to be alone. You're going to be inside one of your best friends. Wait, that, that doesn't sound right. Like, what I mean is it's, it's like having a friend with benefits. Right, that doesn't, no, that's not right either. Okay, so how much do these things cost? Far too much, and it's your bloody fault. When brand new here in Australia, Suzuki were charging around about $25,000, but they sold out like crazy. So Suzuki put the price up to $30,000, and they still sold out like crazy. In fact, if you want a brand new one right now, you could be waiting many, many months to get one. So therefore, the used market has gone crazy. Even like the earliest spec, high kilometer, not great condition ones, they're asking like mid $30,000 range. Accessory laden, mint condition recent ones, some are like forty-five to fifty thousand dollars. There's some even more than that, which is I just I don't understand. Guys, are they worth this sort of money? Let us know in the comments. Suzuki are claiming a fuel consumption figure of six point four liters per one hundred k's for the manual and six point nine liters per one hundred k's for the auto. But through our research. Not many owners are seeing those figures. Obviously, what accessories are bolted onto it and how and where you drive are going to affect those figures. This particular Jimny is claimed at 6.9 litres per 100 k's. It's actually seeing 9.8. Now, before we get into what goes wrong with these, a massive shout out to Jimmy for lending us his awesome little Jimny. Guys, check out his Instagram, check out his YouTube. All the links are down there somewhere. Also, a massive thank you to everybody in the Jimny community that helped us with the research for this video. You guys, legends. Okay, so what goes wrong with the Jimny? Starting with the exterior, pretty good news. We couldn't find any like common problems with the exterior of the Jimny. The only problems that we could find were basically down to aftermarket equipment not being fitted correctly, or it's just dodgy equipment. There have been some complaints about all-terrain tires fitting wheel alignment. That's a whole can of worms that we're not gonna open right now. Or it's just Jimny's that have been driven incredibly hard or just basically abused. Now, how's this for a perfect segue? Hence why it's incredibly important to go and check out our ultimate 4x4 buyer's guide video. Please watch that, guys, because it could save you thousands of dollars when you're buying your next off-roader. Okay, inside, there are a couple of problems. Firstly, problems with the infotainment systems. These larger units that Suzuki are fitting to more recent chimneys, there are so many owners up in arms about these things. Apparently, all sorts of problems. Even on the earlier models, like these ones, the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto are having issues. The screens can like just show a blue screen or black out completely. And there's a heap of problems with Bluetooth connectivity as well. Also, many owners are quite critical of Suzuki, or more specifically, Suzuki dealerships for not coming up with a worthy solution. So if you are in the market for one of these, just make sure that the infotainment system works. Also, and granted, this is far more sporadic. We wouldn't call it common as such. There are a few reports of just like little electronic gremlins here in there like switches not working minor problems it's more of an annoyance than a major problem now guys before we get into mechanically what can go wrong with the Jimny look if you haven't done this already and you're enjoying our content can you please hit those like subscribe and bell buttons especially the subscribe one it just helps us make more of this content for you now mechanically what goes wrong with the Jimny I can't tell you because I'm not a qualified mechanic Jim is the K15B, that's the 1.5 litre four cylinder petrol, they are actually proving to be very reliable, which is fairly typical for any engine built by Suzuki. There are a few complaints about excessive oil consumption. Now, one way to avoid that is just to maybe service it a little bit more frequently. I know I go on and on about this, but the recommended service schedule on these is 15,000 Ks. 10,000 Ks is definitely better. Really with these engines, there's no one big problem that causes catastrophic failures. 
Uh, and out of the ones we've seen in the workshop for servicing, we actually have never had to refer anything back to the dealership for a warranty repair. There are some reports of drive line and transmission complications, and especially with the transfer case. There's been a few instances where the transfer case has had to be completely renewed under warranty, and there's been a few times where it has not been covered by warranty. Now that's got more to do with what the owner has been doing with the car. And in a car like this, there is always the gray area about how it's been designed and what it's been designed for and what it's actually being used for and the way it's being done. What I mean there is it's safe to say that if you do a whole lot of off-roading and go through a whole bunch of creeks and there's water in your diff oil or your transmission oil and you have a catastrophic failure because of that, chances are that is not gonna be covered by warranty. And a pro tip, if you're doing that sort of thing, just change your driveline oils afterwards. And speaking of things that are not covered by warranty, it's the same with lift kits and big wheels and tires. That stuff does put more strain on the driveline and will absolutely void your warranty. Look, a lot of them out there are heavily modified and you actually need those modifications for extreme off-road grocery getting. So if you're looking at one, just make sure the mods are done right and keep in mind that just about any mod can void your warranty. Look, overall, if they are maintained properly and driven with a bit of mechanical sympathy, they are a tough little nugget. But it is important to get a pre-purchase inspection and also go and have a look at our ultimate four-wheel drive buyer's guide. Okay, so should you buy one? No, because you're making it harder for me to buy one. Seriously though, there are very few legitimate reasons why you should buy a Jimny. They aren't all that safe. Almost every other small SUV blows them out of the water for driving refinement on road. They're not all that practical. The interior is utilitarian at best. They're underpowered and they can be terrifying if it gets windy. Okay, sure, they're awesome off-road and they're an absolute breeze to park, but the Jimny's skill set is extremely limited. But you know what? None of that matters because no matter how flawed or illogical a Jimny is, of course, yes, you should buy one. In a world of drowning in sensible and mostly boring SUVs, the Jimny is a bit like a, like a stand-up comedian in a conference full of taxation accountants, and it reminds you just how fun cars can be. Actually, you know what? If anyone from Suzuki is watching this, I genuinely want a five-door Jimny almost more than anything in my life. So can I please have one? Now guys, we need to know what you think. Are these overrated? Would you buy one? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. See you next time. Here in Australia, man, they've sold out like crazy. So Su Su Subaru, this is the new Subaru Jimny. Here we go. Really, with these engines, there's no one big... <laughs> brain was buffering or something. Jesus. It is important to make sure that those mods are done properly. And if you're looking at one, make sure the mods are done properly because you need to make sure the mods are done properly. <laughs> Just make sure those mods are done properly and keep in mind that any mods very will, ah, oh, bloody hell. <laughs>